With a heart as big as her imagination, five-year-old Kayla believed she had discovered a family of abandoned bunnies in her backyard. Filled with pride and compassion, she brought them to the local vet for a checkup. However, upon closer inspection, the vet's face turned pale, and he staggered back in disbelief, quickly instructing his assistant to call animal control. Kayla knew she had seen something moving in the bushes. When she pushed the leaves out of the way, she was confronted with the sight of six, what she assumed to be, hairless bunnies huddled together for warmth. Her parents had told her so many times that they did not want pets or other animals in the house. So Kayla decided that if she wanted to help these poor bunnies, she would have to do it in secret. She looked back at her house through the bushes. She knew that her father, Sebastian, would not be home from work for at least a couple of hours, and her mother, Erica, was cooking dinner in the kitchen. This was her best chance. She wanted to get these animals into her warm bed, and then she would work the rest of her plans out from there. They were heavier than she expected, and Kayla was also surprised they did not jump away like other bunnies would normally do. She had also not seen any bunnies that were bald either. There must be something wrong with them. They did not have big teeth, big ears, or strong hind legs. Kayla started to be more and more convinced that she was dealing with baby animals of some sort, but she had no idea what animals exactly. And even worse, she had no idea how to take care of them. Now. Kayla decided that she needed her mother's help. So with tears in her eyes, she ran downstairs and started explaining everything to her mother, Erica. Kayla led her mother to the hidden corner of her room. There, nestled in a makeshift bed, lay the mysterious creatures. Erica knelt down, observing the creatures with a mix of curiosity and concern. Kayla, these don't look like any bunnies I know, she said cautiously. Erica set aside her skepticism giving way to maternal instinct. All right, Kayla, we'll take them to the vet, she said. She watched as Kayla's face lit up with relief and gratitude. They arrived at the vet's office. The waiting room was abuzz with activity. People with their pets glanced over, trying to sneak a peek. Finally, their names were called. In the examination room, the vet gently lifted the creatures out of the box. Kayla and Erica watched, their hearts in their throats, as he began his thorough examination. He prodded gently, murmuring to himself, his experienced eyes scanning over each animal. Kayla and Erica exchanged worried glances. Suddenly, the vet's demeanor changed. His eyes widened, and he took a step back, a look of disbelief washing over his face. Kayla's grip on her mother's hand tightened. Something was happening. The vet turned and hurried to his computer. He typed quickly, his eyes scanning the screen. Seconds later, he swayed on his feet, his face pale. The vet's assistant, with a tremor in her hand, dialed animal control. We have a situation here, she spoke into the phone, her voice strained. The vet, now sitting up, spoke in a hushed, tremulous voice. I'd never seen anything like them, he confessed, his eyes wide with a mix of fear and disbelief. Two officers, clad in uniforms and carrying equipment, entered briskly. Their professional demeanor and the urgency of their movements added a new level of drama to the unfolding scenario. The vet and the animal control officers gathered in a corner. Their voices were low, but the seriousness of their expressions spoke volumes. As the animal control officers began examining the creatures, a hush fell over the room. Everyone awaited the verdict with bated breath. The animal control officer turned to Erica and Kayla, a look of astonishment on his face. These aren't bunnies, he announced. They're baby capybaras extremely rare. The room erupted in murmurs of shock. Kayla's eyes widened in disbelief. Her earlier assumptions shattered. What happens to them now? Erica asked, her voice tinged with worry. The animal control officer assured them the capybaras would be cared for, but the uncertainty of their future lingered in the air. The idea that someone had illegally transported these vulnerable animals added a grave dimension to their discovery. The animal control officer assured Erica and Kayla, we'll take good care of them. He explained how the capybaras would be placed in a specialized rehabilitation facility. Over the following weeks, Kayla and Erica kept close tabs on the capybaras' progress. They visited the rehabilitation center, watching the creatures grow and thrive. Each visit strengthened the bond between mother and daughter, their shared experience bringing them closer. They found joy in each small step, 
the capybaras took towards returning to the wild. What do you think of Kayla's action towards little creatures? Let us know in the comment section. I hope you like it. Please give it a thumbs up and share it with your loved ones. Also subscribe and press the bell icon to never miss the update from our channel. Thank you.